On June 14, 1984, 24-year-old Michael Tandino was murdered in an execution-style killing in an apartment block in the East Detroit area. Mikey, as he was known to his friends, was a Detroit native who was visiting a childhood friend after returning to Detroit from a stint working in Los Angeles. According to police reports, Tandino was drinking in a bar earlier in the evening with longtime friend Axel Foley, a young detective in the Detroit Police Department. Detective Foley had gained some notoriety in the press earlier in the week when an attempted undercover bust led by Foley went wrong, and thieves led police on a high-speed chase through Detroit at the wheel of a semi-truck, causing thousands of dollars in damage. Ultimately, the thieves were never caught, and the mayor of Detroit at the time, Coleman Young, released a statement denouncing the tactics used by the police and called for an internal investigation into how the case was handled. According to Foley's report on the Tandino murder, he left the bar with the victim at approximately 11pm and arrived at his apartment complex 15 minutes later. As they were entering Foley's residence, they were ambushed by two unknown assailants. Foley was hit from behind with a blunt object believed to be a pistol and knocked unconscious. Tandino was then executed with two gunshots to the back of his head. There were no witnesses to the murder and police later identified the murder weapon as a Charter Arms Undercover 38 Special pictured here. Coincidentally, this was the same type of revolver used to murder John Lennon in 1980. Tandino had a long criminal history and just six months prior had been released from prison after three years incarcerated on charges of theft and assault. Following his release, he moved to Los Angeles and gained employment at a warehouse in the downtown area as a security guard. He was recommended for the job by the manager of the Hollis Benton Art Gallery on Wilshire Boulevard, Jeanette Summers, a childhood friend of both Tandino and Foley. Following the murder, Foley, who was under explicit orders not to investigate the case, took some time off and travelled to Los Angeles to make some inquiries. His later report revealed at the time of his murder, Tandino had been in the possession of a number of German bearer bonds, believed to be valued in the tens of thousands of dollars. Foley suspected Tandino had stolen the bonds, and the murder may have been a revenge killing. He started his inquiries at the Hollis Benton Art Gallery, which was owned by this man, Victor Maitland, a wealthy entrepreneur and respected member of the Beverly Hills socialite community. Maitland was born on the 15th of March 1937 in Birmingham, England, and was the only son of David and Nancy Maitland. Following his parents' separation, he moved to London in the 1950s with his mother, and due to the change in financial circumstances, he attended state schools and lived in Islington, North London, but never completed his formal education. He immigrated to America in 1967 and joined an import and trading business. He then bought out an import company from the receivers and made enough money to start investing in property and art for himself, with early investments in the downtown Los Angeles area. He increased his wealth during the 1970s in art and property trading, and bought the Hollis Benton Art Gallery on Wilshire Boulevard in 1978. Detective Foley first made contact with Maitland when on June 17th he visited him at his office in the mid-Wilshire district of Los Angeles. According to Foley, Maitland was not cooperative with his inquiries, and Foley was thrown out of his office and trespassed by the LAPD, fueling his suspicion that perhaps Maitland had something to hide and was tied to the Tandino murder. The next step in his investigation was to visit this Maitland-owned warehouse where Tandino was employed. He discovered imported items were being unloaded at the warehouse before passing through customs, then being dropped off at this bonded warehouse where the border security would then inspect them. He suspected Maitland may be running drugs using this system after finding coffee grounds at the scene, which are often used by drug traffickers to throw off the sniffer dogs. Foley reported his findings to his contacts at the Beverly Hills Police Department, but they refused to act on what they considered an entirely circumstantial case and potentially ruined the good name of a respected businessman. According to the manifest Foley had observed at the warehouse, a new shipment would be arriving the same day which he believed would contain a large quantity of cocaine. Against direct orders from his lieutenant, 
Detective William Rosewood of the Beverly Hills Police Department accompanied Foley back to the warehouse with Jeanette Summers. And Foley and Summers conducted a search of the premises where they found approximately 80 kilos of cocaine. Their presence at the warehouse was discovered by Victor Maitland who kidnapped Summers and took her hostage at his mansion on Palm Canyon Road in Beverly Hills. Detective Rosewood then entered the warehouse and was forced to kill one suspect in self-defense when he was fired upon. Two other suspects were apprehended at the scene. At 12.14 p.m., Detective Rosewood made the following call to the Beverly Hills PD dispatcher. Tell Packard to check out the warehouse at that address and act on whatever he finds. I'll explain it to him later. Uh, DD6 Sergeant Tiger is here now if he wants to talk to you. Billy, what the hell is going on? I'm sorry, Sergeant, I can't talk now. What do you mean you can't talk now? Just check out the warehouse and please don't say anything to Bogomil. He and Foley then proceeded to the Maitland residence where they were joined by Detective Sergeant John Taggart. The three then having probable cause to believe a felony was in progress, entered the property. Upon entering the main residence, Foley engaged in a firefight with this man, Zachary Winters, a known associate of Victor Maitland. Winters had a history of violent criminal behavior and past ties to organized crime. Detective Foley killed Winters with three shots to his chest from his Browning high power pistol. Investigators later traced the gun used to kill Michael Tandino as being owned by Winters. Victor Maitland then wounded Detective Foley with a gunshot to the arm, and in response, Foley and Lieutenant Andrew Bogomil, who had joined Foley at the scene, killed Maitland with eight gunshots to his chest. In the course of defending themselves, Detective Sergeant John Taggart and Detective Rosewood shot and killed several suspects in the grounds of the estate. The criminal enterprises and death of Victor Maitland came as a shock to the Los Angeles art community as he was one of the biggest art dealers in the US at the time and detectives Foley, Taggart and Rosewood were recognized with medals for heroism. Three years after killing Victor Maitland, Detective Foley played a pivotal role in once again assisting the Beverly Hills Police Department in solving the alphabet crimes. A series of robberies and heists distinguished by the monogrammed envelopes with an alphabetical sequence that the assailants left at the scene. I will cover that case in a later video. Thanks for watching.